good morning students of class 9 today we are going to know about the fundamental unit of life cell the second part of it today's lesson is the structure of the cell the sorry the shape of the cell the size of the cell the function of the cell and the unicellular and multicellular organisms this is our learning objectives for today's lesson first of all we will know about the concept of shape and size of the cell if we see different types of cell as we have learned in class 8 there are different types of cell in our body and those cells are of not of the same size and shape we can see the shape of the size are of different they can be of two types mainly that is fixed shape and the variable shape fixed shape means what what is fixed shape of the cell fixed shape of the cells are most of the plant cell and some animal cells they have fixed shape for example uh, as uh, in case of plant cell the parenchyma cells the sclerenchyma cells they are of all of the same type the parent all the parenchyma cells are of the same type all the sclerenchyma tissue cells are of the same type in case of the variable shaped cells we can see the example of this that wbcs and the unicellular organism that is amoeba both of them show variable shaped structure that can amoeba they can change their shape and also the wbc depending on the function they also can change their shape whereas the fixed shape cells are of different types their shapes can be of different types what are those first of all elliptical type of cell the example of elliptical type of cell is a fat cell the spherical type of cell that is the ovum both the cells are present in the human body and it's they can be of spindle shaped also the example of the spindle shaped cells are the smooth muscle cell and they can be also elongated one the example is the nerve cell or the neuron in addition to this the rbcs they have the discoidal type of structure and various other examples are also there so we can see that there are different shapes of the cell and the size of the cell now we will talk about the size of the cell the size of the cell also can vary from the organisms to the organism here i have to tell you one thing that if we see a rat body all the cells in the rat body are of the semi similar type but not the similar type depending on the functions they are of the different types at different parts of their body functions the different functions they are also of the different types the smallest cell in the world is the mycoplasma galliceptikum the name of the organism which possesses the smallest cell is the mycoplasma galliceptikum this is the scientific terms the scientific terms all ways scientific names all ways should be underlined and the measurement is 0.1 to 0.5 micrometer whereas the largest cell in the world is the ostrich egg cell and the measurement is 18 cm whereas as the if we consider the largest cell in our body the largest cell in our body or in human body is the ovum present in human female body the measurement is 100 to 200 micrometer whereas the smallest cell of human body that is the human lymphocytes it is present in the blood cell in the blood of our it is one of the blood cell in our body and the measurement is 14 to 20 micrometer whereas in some other uh, according to the opinion of some other scientists the smallest cells in human body it also can be the sperm cell that the measurement is about 50 micrometer whereas the if we consider the longest cell of human body the longest cell of human body is the nerve cell or the neuron so from here we can conclude it that the size of the cell 
also are of different if we only consider the human body we can see different type of cell here we will get the examples and the diagram of the uh, diagram of the picture of the different types of cells see this is the picture of the mycoplasma galliceptica this is the whole body of the organism made up of it and it is the smallest cell the largest cell the egg cell itself is a largest cell and ostrich egg so from these two examples we can see one thing also that uh, the some cells when they are larger in size we can see them with our naked eyes but most of the cells can be seen throughout through the microscope here the example of the large, long, longest longest human body cell that is the nerve cell and there is also the example of the human lymphocyte that is the smallest cell that present in our blood tissue so now we will go to the next part of today's lesson the next part of today's lesson is the functions of the cell the functions of the cell what are the different functions of the cell first one cell provides the structure of living organism cell provides the structure of the living organisms as in last class or last lesson we have talked about that cell is the structural and functional unit of the life so it makes the structure so it gives the structure of the living organisms body it arranged one after another and make the structure of the living organisms body second function of the cell it provides a proper shape of living organisms body if we consider an organism made up of a single cell so what is the shape of the cell the shape of the organism is also that one so in this way we can say that it provides a proper shape of the living organisms body third one it maintains the growth of the living organism it maintains the growth of the living organism how the cell divides and when the cell divides in increases in number and that is the part of the growth in this way the growth is possible when the more number of cells are are added in the same organism organism's body the growth is possible fourth function of the cell it is responsible for multiplication of living organism same way if we consider an organism made up of a single cell when the cell divides into two then a new organism made up of a single cell can be formed this is cell division and also the reproduction process in ca in case of an organism made up of a single cell next function of the cell it is responsible for respiration and energy production in living respiration and energy production in living different small parts are present in the cell those are called as the cell organelles or cellular organelles in the cellular organelles the respiration process occurs where in the name of the cellular organelle is mitochondria where the respiration occurs and due to this process the energy production takes place in the in our body in all living organisms body thus the cell is responsible for respiration and energy production in living organism the last function of the cell is that it is responsible for transportation of essential components in living organism transportation of essential components like carbon dioxide oxygen different nutrients water hormones all these are transferred from one cell to another cell next part of the of today's objective uh, today's part is that the concept of the cellular unicellular and multicellular organism unicellular and multicellular what is unicellular organism and what is multicellular organism uni uni means one so when the organism is made up of a single cell it is called as the unicellular organism that that is written here single cell constitute the whole body of the organism then it is called as the unicellular organism and when the organism is made up of more than one cell or more than two cells they are called as the multicellular organism here it is written that many cells together make the whole body next 
Another feature of the unicellular and multicellular organisms is that division of labor only seen between the cell organelles of the very cell, whereas division of labor is seen between the cells. Now we have to know about what is division of labor. The cell is present in our body, it makes the whole structure of our body. In case of a multicellular organism, if we consider the human body, we have different parts in our body like digestive system, reproductive system, respiratory system and all these parts together perform different functions and help to run a full living system. So here the digestive system have the function of the digestion, the respiratory system help, to, uh, help in respiration, the reproductive system help in the reproduction process. So different parts, different organs are there where the whole work is divided into different parts and thus the whole multicellular organism perform and that help in their stay alive. Whereas in case of a single cell animal or organism, single cell organism, we cannot see, in case of the single cell organism, we cannot see different parts, but within a cell, within a cell, we can see different organelles which perform different functions and thus the division of labor is, di is distributed within the same cells. Now, what are the examples of unicellular and multicellular organism? The amoeba is the example of the unicellular organism. Paramecium is the example of the unicellular organism, whereas multicellular organism, all the uh, advanced type of plants, we are the animals, human body, all are the examples of the multicellular organism. So today's, this is all about the today's lesson. Here I am giving you the assignment. What is the assignment? There are five questions. You can see here, you have to write down all these five questions and in your copy, keep it with you afterwards. I will check the copy and if you have any queries, ask me in the fixed time in, your, in our WhatsApp group. Thank you. Stay home and stay safe.